Live Fit Podcast, Episode 73, Knee Pain and Colon Cancer, with Dr. Will Harden. You make an assumption that that's not the kind of thing that a chiropractor addresses. And yet, I, I end up treating knee pain issues with great regularity on a daily basis. Otherwise healthy and athletic people, the most common cause for knee pain that I see is... So what you're asking is, as a result of having a portion of your colon or your large intestine removed, what might you do to enhance your colon or digestive health? Welcome to the Live Fit Podcast with Glenn Johnson, your resource for all things that contribute to good health. You will hear expert advice and interviews with leading authorities on fitness, food, fat loss, mindset, and the mind-body connection. You will find show notes, articles, and health programs at livefitpodcast.com. Ah, yes, it is time once again for the Live Fit Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Johnson. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Welcome to episode 73. In this Wednesdays with Will episode, Dr. Harden is going to talk about knee pain, how to prevent it, and how to relieve it. There's many reasons people experience knee pain, and Dr. Will is going to discuss many of them and what you can do to do away with that pain and help protect your knees from future damage. He's also going to address a listener question about a partial colon removal. What do you do after colon cancer to make sure you get the nutrients and the digestion to really have high quality of life? A couple of weeks ago, I was speaking with my parents, and they told me that they had walked 1,000 miles last year in 2015 and 600 the year before that. Now, I discussed this in last week's episode of the Lift Fit podcast, but I wanted to bring up the point that at, when they told me this, I was really blown away. And after I picked my job off the ground and realized that 1,092 miles in a year comes out to be almost three miles per day on average, I realized that this took an amazing feat of motivation. What motivates them to walk every day? So I asked them, and if you listened to last week's episode, number 72, you heard their answer. But if not, I recommend going back and hearing that. But it gave me an idea. What motivates you? All these people are out there doing things. They're exercising, they're biking, they're going to the gym, they're doing this and that and the other. What motivates them? Everybody has their own personal motivation. So I'm starting a new series. I'm asking everybody I come in contact with, including you, what motivates you? And I thought I'd get this started. Well, I already started it last week with my folks, but I thought I'd get today's started with me. What motivates me to stay fit, to stay healthy? One is... Well, you, I need to set a good example. I truly do. I started personal training back in 1999, and one of the things I realized really early on is that you have to look the part. Nobody's going to listen to you if you don't look like you take care of yourself, if you don't look like you eat right or exercise, if you look like you've been you know, up all night drinking and partying. People are not going to give you their trust, put their health and fitness in your hands. So just for my business, I needed to live the part. I had to walk the walk. But that's not the only reason I stay fit. One is I want to feel better because it really does make me feel better. On my sedentary days, I feel horrible. On my active days, I feel really great. My third reason, longevity. I want to live for a really long time. Actually, my goal is to see my 100th birthday. That is my goal. I want to see my 100th birthday. But I have a stipulation. I don't want to just be surviving, laying in a hospital bed, barely conscious. No, 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 no. I'll give up 20 years to not do that. I need to be vital and active and aware and in decent shape. I don't know that I'm going to be running or biking at that age. Probably not. But I at least want to be able to walk the length of a hallway, okay, without uh, feeling like I'm going to crumble. So that's that's my third reason. And my fourth reason, you know, just because it's it's a habit by now. This is the way I live my life. So that is my motivation to keep going because this is what I do. This is part of who I am. So that's my motivation. That's why I do it. But I want to hear from you. What motivates you? Email me at glenn at livefitlean.com. 
glenn at livefitlean.com and tell me or answer this question, what motivates you? I'm going to put your answer on the LiveFit podcast as well as the LiveFit newsletter so others can hear what motivates you and maybe it'll spark something in them. If maybe somebody doesn't have the motivation they, they need, maybe they haven't realized what will motivate them. But by hearing from you and you and you and you, they might just be able to find the energy, the strength, the willpower, the motivation they need to get moving and get off that couch and get out there and do that thing that will make them more healthy and more fit and more vital and more happy in their life. All right? What do you say? What motivates you? All right, now we're going to move on over to Wednesdays with Will interview as he discusses knee pain and answers the listener question about colon cancer. All right, well, I have a question for you. Is there anything you as a chiropractor would do if somebody comes in with knee pain? In all honesty, you'd probably be shocked at how many people tell me they have knee pain. In truth, most people don't think to go to a chiropractor because they have knee pain. And most patients that I see for knee pain are not initially coming here to address that because they make an assumption that that's not the kind of thing that a chiropractor addresses. And yet I, I end up treating knee pain issues with great regularity on a daily basis. And it's, it's just ever so common to see and hear about knee problems. The typical scenario is someone is let's say under care for a low back issue or they're under wellness care where they see me once a month and they say they do that because it just makes them feel more stable it keeps their old problems from cropping up whatever and they might mention i've been noticing that i have knee pain lately when i get up from a stoop position or when i try to run So the first order of business in any knee condition is to make sure it's not some kind of pathology, some kind of potential surgical problem, something for which it is critically necessary that the patient undertakes some physical therapy, etc. So a knee exam, which is not all that complicated a procedure, involves assessing the integrity of the ligaments the menisci, and I'm sure you've heard of the medial and lateral meniscus. Those are the little pads of cartilage between the femur and the tibia. In other words, the weight-bearing cartilage of the knee joint. And then, um, of course, we want to verify that there's no indications of something like bone tumor, bone cyst, joint infection, etc. And those things are generally fairly easy to ascertain by way of physical exam or at least to rule out by physical exam. And in otherwise healthy and athletic people, the most common cause for knee pain that I see is, I could give this multiple different names. Some practitioners would say, oh, you have patellar tendonitis. Someone else might say, you have a condition called chondromalacia patelli. And someone else might say, you have a patellofemoral tracking syndrome. And I really would classify those without breaking each of those down all as one condition. So picture the anatomy of a knee. The underside of the kneecap is triangular. The kneecap is a more or less free-floating bone in front of the knee the triangular underside of that patella meets up with the triangular femoral groove. That is to say, there is a triangular groove within the front of the lower portion of your thigh bone, your femur, that matches the triangular shape of the patella. And every time you straighten your knee, you contract your quadricep muscles, And it pulls that hinge, that kneecap, up the femoral groove, and that straightens your knee. In many cases, particularly of runners, 
but also people who have flattening of their arches, people who wear poor footwear, certainly those who have a tendency for a condition called genuvalgus. Think of it as being slightly knock-kneed. If the if the femorotibial angle, in other words, the angle between your upper and your lower leg is altered in such a way that you have a slight knock kneed position, then the kneecap is not moving squarely up through that femoral groove. And instead, it's kind of grinding and exerting friction on the outer portion of the femoral groove and the outer underside of the patella. It's sure easier to tell you with some visual aids how to picture this, but I think you can get your mind around that. I will put some on the show notes page so people can okay, view great. that and, and kind of see what you're talking about. Perfect. So in runners and those other individuals that I just cited, the outer quadriceps are almost always too strong compared to the inner quadriceps which should be balanced in their strength. The balanced strength of the inner and outer quads allow that patella to move straight up and down instead of off to the inside or outside aspect of the knee. So 19 out of 20 times when you encounter an athlete or a runner with knee pain that was not related to trauma, is not associated with arthritis or meniscal tearing, is not associated with an anterior cruciate ligament tear. A patellofemoral tracking syndrome exists. And this over time leads to tendonitis of the tendon that attaches the patella to the tibia, and that would be called patellar tendonitis. And if you ignore this condition long enough, then the cartilage on the underside of the kneecap becomes worn and that's called chondromalacia patelli. But I I don't usually see it in I don't I don't see chondromalacia patelli frequently because most people won't endure that kind of pain that long before they do something about it. So there are a lot of things you can do to totally arrest this condition. First, I suggest daily foam rolling on the outer thigh tissues, specifically the outer quadriceps, and what's called the iliotibial band. And I, I'm sure you have encountered so many people with iliotibial band pain syndromes. I don't know that I've ever met someone who's foam, roll, foam rolled their outer thigh on the iliotibial band and not complained of horrific pain. It's absolutely intolerable, at least initially. So you can't put all your weight on the outer thigh on top of a foam roll. You got to take some of the weight off by putting the other leg on the foam roll at the same time. You know, do you understand what I mean by that? Yeah, I, I've done that, but I've also, the way I like to do it is I put my upper leg, my foot down on the ground. Yes, so the that's the other, that, and that helps that's your other weight. option. But I find that that, and sometimes I'll do it that way. And I used to recommend it that way, but I found that you're probably not going to foam roll for a good four or five minutes, which an iliotibial band needs. If you're exerting effort by putting that other foot down and lifting with your hand, and if you can somewhat relax while you're on the foam roll, by shifting yourself into kind of a side posture position while drawing the other leg up and resting it on the foam roll, that helps. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then for rolling the quads, I suggest laying face down on a foam roll underneath your thighs, toes turned in. So picture yourself laying there pigeon toed so that you're changing the trajectory of the downward force toward your outer thighs and then rolling foam rolling both quads at the same time. It's more tolerable that way and you can really relax for it that way. Second, so first, foam rolling. Second, kinesio taping your patellar condition, namely by taping essentially the quads and the iliotibial band, almost always gives instant relief of knee pain with athletic endeavors in those with knee pain. And 
this is just so fascinating. Ten years ago, kinesio tape was rendered only by professionals who were certified kinesio tapers, and you couldn't buy it anywhere except through a professional's office. Well, now you can buy it at Dick's Sporting Goods, and I think even Walgreens carries it. And you can find out exactly how to apply it on YouTube. So if you YouTubed patellar tendonitis K-taping, you would find out how to tape your own knee very effectively. Oh, that stuff is great. I, I love I love the technology. I love that you can find how to do all kinds of things on your on your own through YouTube and something like that. Uh, and oh, so agree. And, and I don't really see what would be the harm in somebody if they didn't do it right. The worst that would happen is that it wouldn't seem to give you much relief. Right, but no real harm. But it will not induce a mechanical irregularity that leads to other problems. No, it won't. You'll simply say, I tried kinesio tape, didn't do much good. Well, chances are good it probably wasn't being applied right if it was for knee pain that you were using it because it's one of the most predictably responsive conditions there is for kinesio tape. So in the meantime, if the outer quad is too strong compared to the inner quad, it would be wise to strengthen inner quad musculature or the vastus medialis. And the way that you would do that to keep it really simple would be lay on your back with, let's say you have left knee pain and it's determined that it's a patellofemoral tracking problem. You would lay on your back and bend your right knee about 90 degrees. Now with a straight left leg, the symptomatic leg, turn your toe out as far as it can go. Then raise that left leg until your knees are side by side. Then lower the straight left leg back down, not quite to the floor. Then repeat and do 12 to 15 reps of that, three to even six sets a day. And you're target strengthening those inner quads. And that will help to reestablish balance of inner and outer quads. I've heard of a very similar exercise, but done seated up on the floor up against a wall. Is it okay if you're sitting versus laying? I would rather you were laying because the seated position is probably going to, to promote an increased likelihood of hip stress by over-engaging the psoas muscle. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's why I wanted to ask you because I was saying yeah. that, that, that there is a difference between the two positions. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll probably get a lot more burn in the quad versus in the hip by doing it laying on your back. Another consideration. If you have dropping of, let's say in the case of that left knee pain, slight dropping of your left arch, then as you drop the medial or inner portion of the foot, you're also dropping the inner or medial portion of the knee you're kind of creating a knock kneed state on that left side. And if you were to look down at your knee while doing that, you would see that you are directing the kneecap more toward the outer portion of the, of the leg, the thigh. Therefore, with a patellofemoral tracking issue, it's very important to ensure that you have adequate arch support. So with this condition, particularly in those who are fairly athletic on their feet, runners, hikers, uh, hardcore walkers, it's really important to either wear a shoe that has a good arch support or to even go to a running store, have a basic arch assessment done. You'd be amazed how many people I refer for just a basic arch support at a running store whose feet and knees improve. And the way they do that at running stores now is they'll have you get on a treadmill barefooted, walk, and then take a 10-second run while they video it. Then you step off, they play it back in slow motion, and you watch what's happening to the mechanics of your feet, ankles, and sometimes knees to see if there's a breakdown in the gait that's stressing those knees. And then they'll recommend a an off-the-shelf kind of fit by size arch support, and many people do really well with those and see immediate improvement in knee problems. Wow, that's amazing. Now, I, I'm going to paint for you a bigger philosophical picture. Running, 
really became a craze in, in the 60s. And within about a decade, there was an, a, a mark, 